From the beginning, Fox 61 has been committed to being a voice for the vulnerable. COVID-19 is preying on populations in congregate living situations where it is more difficult to socially distance. But what is the state doing about it? Middletown, the sprawling and somewhat ominous structures that make up Connecticut Valley Hospital and Whiting Forensics. Psychiatric hospitals that house the criminally mentally ill, some in restraint beds. I just really think because it's a state-run facility that, you know, we should be hearing the numbers. Another vulnerable population to COVID-19, Fox 61 got those numbers. And here they are. Ten patients are infected at Connecticut Valley Hospital, nine staff. Six patients have tested positive at Whiting and 12 staff. In total, 16 patients and 29 staff are COVID positive across the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services network of facilities. Miriam Delphin Rittman is the agency's commissioner. She explained to Fox 61 just a few of the steps they're taking to make sure people are as safe as possible. So, for example, um, rather than an entire unit, having lunch or dinner all at once. We're breaking the units up to smaller uh, groups of people and, and staggering meal times. Demas has logged one patient death at a different facility and several recoveries. What we have in fact seen both at Whiting and CBH is a number of, of our patients who were diagnosed positive have in fact recovered. 35 miles away, the Southbury Training School in Southbury provides a less restrictive, supportive home to hundreds of people with intellectual disabilities. They're talking every day about the hospitals and the nursing homes, yet these state-run facilities like Southbury Training School is excluded. Another vulnerable population. People that are bedridden there. So, um, you know, they're not mobile, they can't get up and get around. And they are managed under the umbrella of the Department of Disability Services. Donna Dennehy's friend works there. She said there's been a lack of transparency. Any state-run facility should be accountable just like the nursing homes are and how the hospitals are. The Department of Disability Services declined an interview, but they sent Fox 61 a statement that read in part, DDS sends our deepest condolences to the family and everyone affected. Our highest priority is to keep the residents of STS and the staff healthy while continuing to provide the highest quality of care possible in a safe environment during this extraordinarily difficult time. 19 residents and 13 staff have COVID at the training school. Two members of their staff have died. That is a bit of a frightening situation. DDS did tell me that they're working to stop the spread by converting three of their buildings into isolation facilities. They're providing their staff with personal protective equipment, and they're making sure that they all have health screenings before they enter the residential homes. For the Fox 61 News, I'm Matt Karen.